Right, I think we are live. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me in a solo playthrough of Dead Reckoning. Delayed from last week because uh, I got COVID. I'm still a little bit COVID-y, um, but I'm I'm mostly okay to do, to do to do this. So yeah, let me know if you can hear me and you can see me okay. The last few lives of streams I've done, I've forgotten to turn the microphone on. But this time, says James, the audio and the video is fine. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm also going to pop the chat out because it's a little bit small for my uh, for my fading eyes. There you go. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me this evening. I have done uh, a playthrough of this this afternoon. I spent this afternoon, I've basically taken today off work. Um, this isn't a sponsored video in any way, but my Patreon supporters give me the flexibility to take some days off work and that's what I've done today. So I've taken the today off work, spent the day learning how to play the solo mode, done a practice game this afternoon and obviously taken the evening um, to, to yeah, bring you a solo playthrough. So a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for funding the channel. And if you do like the content that I create, let's get this out there straight away. Um, you can support me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Uh, and your support directly contributes to me being able to continue to make videos like this. Right then. So the solo play of Dead Reckoning. I'm not going to teach you how to play the actual game itself. I've already done videos on that on the channel, but I am going to th run through the solo mode with you today. So this video kind of assumes that you know how to play the solo, uh, know, know how to play the base game. If you don't, you can still watch along and you'll get an idea of how it plays, but the multiplayer game is different. So uh, the solo game I'm going to be playing, it's effectively a two player game and it is an AI called the Wayward Covenant. Uh, who I'm going to be competing against. The game ends in the normal way uh, that when one player has got four of the achievements and then we count up the points and the points are scored in exactly the same way uh, as a multiplayer game would be. And we'll go through that at the end. In my practice game this afternoon, I just lost. I thought I was doing really well, um, but I lost. I scored 69 and the Wayward Covenant scored 74. So let's see. I mean, that was my first game playing in the solo mode. Um, the board is set up as normal. My my starting 12 card crew deck is set up as normal. That's slightly off camera. Um, we've got four cards from my starting hand that I've that I've done that I've put there. The Wayward Covenant is a special deck. Uh, let's just zoom in on that. So this is a special deck of cards uh, and there are different difficulty levels. So these cards are actually two sided. There's the easy side, which is the blue side. And then the red side is the more difficult side. You can play, you can mix and match. So I'm playing on the normal difficulty level today, which is all 18 cards blue side up, but you can do 50-50 or you could do all red. There's an even more difficult difficulty setting where you use the red sides, but after every third card, they get an extra bonus go. Uh, well, considering I can't beat it on the normal difficulty level, we'll get to that later on. Um, so yeah, we're going to be playing a two player game. And as I say, it, it plays out pretty much like a multiplayer game. Now, I, as the first player, I go first. Now, I'm not putting my money in the chest. You are supposed to put your money in the treasure chest, but I'm not going to bother. In fact, I've moved my harbour to here, uh, and this is my money. So I'm actually using metal coins from, I think it's Edge of Darkness, another game from AEG. Uh, so I've got these gold ones here as uh, tens. In fact, if I zoom in on my board, you can see them. So these are tens, these are threes, and these are ones. So I start with 15 coins, pretend these are in my chest here. Uh, and the AI, the Wayward Covenant, also has 15, and it says you don't need to bother putting them in the chest. You just basically keep them here. So this is my victory points at the end of the game. This is the Wayward Covenant's victory points. And you will notice uh, in, in the solo game, like in the multiplayer game, I basically have to um, transport all of the money that I earn on the map back to my base. The AI doesn't need to do that. Whenever the AI gets money or anything like that, it pretty much goes straight on there. Right, we're going to make a start. So uh, I go first. So I start with one barrel here and I'm going to take my turn as normal. Right, okay. So I've got my four cards. I've got my four starting cards. Uh, what am I going to do? Have I got any sails? I don't. I've got two crew and two deck hands. So I don't have any sails to start with. So what I'm going to do is I might as well set my sails now to two. And let's have a look at the board. What we've got, uh, and I do have a preset on the new camera that I bought with Patreon funds. So thank you very much again to all of my Patreon supporters. But we've got a new side camera. Um, and we can see here that th these this starting row is already revealed. So we have Deep Reef Crag, which is a set of islands that can be controlled. We have a card that costs two. We have the twins here with a card that costs one. And we have a merchant ship over there. Now, I don't feel that I'm tough enough yet to go and start fighting merchant ships. 
Um, but I do have one cargo at my home base. So potentially I could go out here and buy this card um, with the pirate flag on it. Let's have a look. I've also got, I've got two deck hands. That's going to allow me to actually take control of an island and Deep Reef Crag. I don't know if you can see this. Let me just zoom in a little bit on Deep Reef Crag so you can see. There we go. There's Deep Reef Crag. So there are only two spaces for cubes. If I put a cube on both of those spaces, then straight away I will control that island. That might not be a bad start, actually. Um, so I think we might do that. Oh, I've also got two crew. This can put... Yeah. Okay, I've got a plan. I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to press that button. Right, so first of all, I'm going to play this card, crew, and I'm going to generate one barrel... Uh, at my port and then I'm going to play another crew card and generate another barrel at my port. So I take two barrels and I put them at my port. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to load all those three barrels onto my ship. My sails have already been set at two. I am then going to use my first of my two sails. I'm going to spend one of my sails to move to here. When I arrive at Deep Reef Crag, I am going to play both of my deck hand cards to place two cubes here. So what that does is that controls that island. So I get a permanent cube there. Uh, I now control the island, which means I get the special ability. So my hand limit is increased by one. It's going to be worth points at the end of the game. And any money and goods that are on here, I can load onto my ship. But I've still got one movement point left. And I can still buy a card. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend these two barrels and I'm going to buy this advancement. Now, one of the cool things with this game, uh, unlike, for example, Mystic Veil, another game from AEG by John D. Clare, is that you do not sleeve your advancements immediately. So what happens when you buy an advancement, it just goes to one side and you sleeve it at the end of your turn, or you can actually save one advancement. This is a really cool rule that I like, because if you've played Mystic Veil a lot, like I have, you will quite often find that you're buying an advancement and you think, oh, I've got the perfect card for that to slot into, but it's not in my hand right now. Well, John has fixed that issue by saying one advancement you can keep from one turn to the next, and then when the card comes up that it would be perfect for, then I can slot it in. So anyway, there you go. I really like that rule. Um, so I've done that, I've done that. I've got no cards left, but I do still have one movement point. So we are gonna move. Yeah, this is, this is my prize if I win, or if I lose, I'm still gonna eat it. Um, so I'm gonna use my one remaining movement point to move to here. Okay, now because I've explored, I get to put a cube up here. In a two-player game, if you explore five times, you get this achievement. And remember, four achievements and the game ends. So we're going to move my boat to here. We straight away draw a card from the number two box. These have all been shuffled. They're off camera. There we go. That's going to cost me three cargo. Um, and that's it. That That is my turn. Pretty much done. I've played all of my cards. I've moved, I've bought advances, and yeah, we're done. So we refill any advances as normal. Then I choose whether I want to go into pirate mode or not, and I do not. Um, lose unspent sales, discard cards, and then draw new cards. Now, one of the things that I find with this game is that I very often forget to level up. So one of the cool things in this game is that your 12 cards or your deck of cards represent your crew. And as the game goes on, they gain experience and they level up. And that's represented by in between your turns, you can level up one of the cards from your hand. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to sleeve the advancement. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to sleeve the advancement. Hang on. Let's go back. I'm going to sleeve this advancement. And where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it in there. Doesn't really matter at this stage. And if you don't know the game, I'm just going to zoom in. What happens is in these sleeves, you have the crew card at the back with the stats on. Then you have the covering thing there and these slot in between the two. So there you go. You can see that that card is now better because it's been crafted. It's got an extra ability on it. Right. Discard pile. So as I was saying, one of the things that you can do in this game is between your turns, you level up your crew. And I'm always forgetting to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little piece here. I'm going to put it on there. And that reminds me that I have not yet leveled up my card. Because otherwise, I'm just going to forget completely. Um, right, so that's it. That's, that's, my, that's my first turn done. I've drawn my four new cards. I will level up before it's my next turn. 
and now it is the AI's go. So we've got this deck of cards and what we do is I'm using my gaming rules dice to track the number of turns because you reveal the card and the number, the turn number indicates which section of the card it uses. Basically the AI gets stronger as the game goes on. So in rounds one to three on its first three turns it's going to do that. Well it will do the top section. Uh, in turn two it will do the top section of the next card and in turn three it will do the top section of the next card. If this was round six for example it would be doing this bit okay now first of all on the left hand side we have some iconography which is basically this and that's why it suggests you have the board laid out like this with the harbor on the left hand side and a four by three grid the four by three grid is mirrored on this card here and this is telling us various pieces of information first of all the space which is highlighted in orange that is where uh, the uh, enemy ship is going to end up the space surrounded with a white border means it will take the advancement from that space and the cubes indicate that it's going to drop cubes on those spaces. Now straight away you will notice that that space there that's orange with the cube with the white outline is currently not explored. So any time there is uh, any reference to a card on there which hasn't been explored the AI explores it and gets an exploration cube for doing so. So there you go, they have explored once. We're going to, rev we're going to place a, a, a level two advancement on it straight away. And it's actually going to take that advancement. Now it doesn't have a deck of cards, the Wayward Covenant, but what it does is it has two piles for its cards. Let's just show this over here. Let's get rid of this mess. Give us a bit more space. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that. There we go. So it's going to have two piles for the advancements. Any advancements that it gets with a cannon or a battle ability go in one pile, which is its pirate pile, and any other advancements will go in a mercantile pile. So because that's got a cannon on, that goes in its pirate pile. Um, that's there. Now it's going to put cubes, one cube on that space and that space. So we go back to the map and it's going to put a cube there and it's going to put a cube there. Now if those were open seas, then it wouldn't have placed cubes. You can get a little bit lucky uh, with that. But that's how that works. Right, now let's look back at the card. We've done, we've, oh, we need to move the ship as well. We've moved the ship, we've placed the cubes, we've taken the advancement. Then we look on this middle section and there can be various criteria in the middle section. There's two of them. Uh, and this is saying if there is an island on the board which the AI doesn't control that has stuff on it, it will basically try and take control of that island. Right now there isn't. There are no islands on the board um, which with stuff on it, so we actually skip that bit, and then the right hand section is clear, that's it, that is turn one done. Okay, Paul, AI takes a turn. Yes, the AI has taken a turn. What are people shouting at me? The chat is saying that the AI takes the first turn. Have I done it wrong? <laughs> did, I mean, I did, a, I did a playthrough this afternoon. I thought, okay, thank you very much. Have I, have I done it wrong? I mean, if the chat is saying that, I did a playthrough this afternoon and, I, and I've obviously misremembered it. Uh, the Wayward Covenant always takes the first turn. Right, okay, so we're going to have a slight undo. The Wayward Covenant should have gone first. Thank you very much for that. I will spot it in the chat. So, the Wayward Covenant did that first. That means we've got a slight... That means uh, I should have an extra cargo. Okay. So the Wayward Covenant did that first. It hasn't changed anything. Awesome. Awesome. Good to know. Right. Thank you very much for that. I did spot it in the end <laughs> in the chat. As I said, the chat is a little bit far away and I don't have proper glasses yet. Um, but I think we fixed it. So the AI went first, did that. Then I went. And that's it. I think we fixed it. All I needed to do was transfer one barrel from there to there. We're good. Right. So now it is the AI's second turn. So we tick that onto turn two. We're going to reveal the next card. And again, we're still using the top, set, top section because it is uh, turns one to three. So what we've got is we've got those two spaces highlighted and it's doing something very similar. Uh, it's taking the advancement from there and it's placing a cube there. Speaking of the advancements, I needed to replenish that. So unfortunately, it's exploring here. There we go. Okay, so that is going to make that island uh, more productive. Um, it gets an advancement on there. 
it's explored so it gets another cube on here and now it is placing a cube ah now i got lucky here it's actually placing a cube here and here but both of these are open spaces so it doesn't do anything with that but it does take this advancement now this is a merchant ship okay so whenever it takes a merchant ship advancement you flip a coin to see what it will do so i'm going to flip this coin heads or tails it's heads so let me just check in the rules what it does um merchant ships here we go uh, if heads then it places a cube on the legendary achievement and keeps the advancement on the backside. Right, okay. So what it's done is, is it, it's attacked the merchant ship uh, and it's won, which means it gets a cube up there for winning a fight. We flip the advancement over and it's got two cannons on it. So it goes on its pirate pile. Then, unfortunately, we have this icon, which means we're going to have our first fight. So the Wayward Covenant is in, I've obviously got out the wrong side of bed this morning. It's in an aggressive mood and it's basically going to attack me if I'm not in harbour. Okay. And I am not in harbour. So I'm going to get attacked. So here's how we're going to have our first combat, which if, you, if you've not seen the combat in this game before, you're in for a treat. We need to work out how many cannons the Wayward Covenant has. The Wayward Covenant starts with one. It gets cannons based on its upgrades, which it doesn't have yet. And then for every two cards, or every two advancements in its pirate pile, it's got two, it gets another cannon. Me, I, I haven't, I've got one cannon for this, but I haven't leveled up yet. And this is where I might choose to have a sneaky quick level up now. I haven't got, again, I, drew, I didn't draw my gunners. Where are my gunners? Oh, they're in the bottom of the deck. Pesky gunners sleeping in so there aren't any level ups that i can do that's actually going to help me unfortunately so i'm going to put that there i still haven't leveled up i only have one cannon so this is it it's a very simple fight it is two cannons versus one cannon and off we go so fights in this game use this right it's basically a cube tower and where they land will determine what happens so what we're going to do is we're going to put these in and see what happens Oh, now hang on a minute. I didn't drop them all in. There we go. Right. So what we now do is we, there's no battle abilities uh, at the moment. So we're literally just looking for spoils. So I've got a cube in here, which means I get one barrel on my ship. And that's that cube done. Uh, and the Wayward Covenant gets a coin or a barrel. And they, they always take a coin because that's more valuable for them. So they get a coin. So we're going to give them a coin. There we go. And then, then you count up the number of crowns. But the Wayward Covenant always wins ties. So it's got a cube in a crown. That doesn't actually matter because if that wasn't there, it still would have won. Because uh, as I say, the Wayward Covenant always wins ties. But it's won the fight. Now, whenever it wins the fight, the default condition for winning a fight is the other side takes one point of damage. I might have taken more damage depending on where the cubes landed. But that didn't happen. Uh, and for winning a fight it gets another cube up there. So it's already done that twice. Oh dear. Right. Well, there we go. That is the AI's second turn. Right. So now it's my go. Rolling up my sleeves. I, I now need to level up one of my cards. So again, you level up a card in between your turns. And I think... <coughs> <coughs> what am I going to do? If I do that... Yeah, I'm going to level up the Buccaneer. Uh, so what you do to level to level a card up, you basically, they start off at level one, as you can see down here. And to level them up to level two, you take the back thing and you flip it over. And then that slots in, goes in there, and then they're level two. Later on, you can level them up to level three by flipping it over like that. And then they can level up to level four. So level four is the highest level they can get to. So I've now got a Buccaneer of level two. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play that Buccaneer straight away to place two cubes on this island where I now am. One, two. Now, that doesn't get me control of the island because... Let's just go to preset two. Um, control of the island has to be 
that you've got more cubes than other players and also you have to have more cubes than there are empty spaces. So this island here, there are four empty spaces. I have two cubes, but there are two empty spaces. So at the moment, although I've got the most cubes there, I currently do not control that island. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how control works. Right, but I've played the Buccaneer, I've done that. Now I could, if I wanted to, dump these cargo on the island but I wouldn't be able to pick them up again because it's not my island. Um, yeah. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to set sails, but I'm going to play the captain card first, which gives me one sail. Um, plus the one sail from here means I've got two sails. Two sails should be enough, he says. This is a little risky based on what I think the AI might do next. Yeah, this is a little risky. I mean, I'll tell, I tell you what I could do. I could buy this advancement first. This advancement costs three. If I buy this advancement first, then I could actually use all of the cargo that's on my ship and then I'd set sails and I'd have three movement. Is that what I want to do? <laughs> I'm not actually sure. Um, because this card is really good, but it says, if this card has at least three cannons, deal one damage to all enemy ships within one space, brackets not in harbour. Seems expensive for a cannon. Oh, I've got a thing that I need to replenish over there. Oh... What should I do? What should I do? One, two, three, four. It's not quite enough. Okay, okay. I know what I'm going to do. I am going to spend the three barrels that are on my ship and I'm going to buy this advancement. Okay, so I'll sleeve that advancement at the end of my turn. Or I might save it. I'm then... I'm then going to set sails, and I've got I've got three sails now. Yeah, I've got three sails. So my first sail is going to be to here, which is going to explore, and we have found Devil's Backbone. So that's another exploration cube. So I've got two exploration cubes, and I move to there, and straight away we get a level three advancement, which goes on there. That's expensive. It's going to cost me four to buy that. I've still got two sails left. Now you can only explore once per turn. So I can't now just carry on exploring all of these. You can move through them, but you're not allowed to end your movement on these once you've explored once during your turn. But I still have two sails left. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use those two sails to turn around and come back towards home. And the reason I'm doing that is because I am now going to play my Purser card, which allows me to produce on one island. And you can produce on any island. It doesn't have to be an island you control. But of course, if you produce on any old island, um, then, you know, the, the other players will come along and steal the stuff. So I'm just going to produce on Deep Reef Crag, which is here. It's not a very good island to produce on. It only gets one coin. But we've put a coin there. Uh, I've got no movement points left, I've no sails left, but I am then going to play the bosun, which generates me one barrel at home. So one barrel in my port. That is my turn done. You know, you don't have to play all of your cards. Unlike other deck construction games or deck building games like this, you can keep cards from one turn to the next. It's really important to remember that. You've actually got a hand limit of six at the start of the game. Mine's seven because I own this. And you draw four cards at the end of your turn. So I didn't need to play this card if I didn't want to. I could have kept it in my hand and then I would have drawn four and then next turn I would have had five cards in my hand. So just be aware of that. You do not have to play all of your cards and it's probably tactically wise not to. So we are going to play, we're going to put this card, we're going to put it on. Now I, I want to put this on a gunner 
<clears throat> so I'm actually going to save that advancement. I'm not going to sleeve that advancement. I will sleeve it next turn. You can keep one, uh, one advancement from one turn to the next. So if I had more than one advancement, uh, I would have to sleeve the other one. Right, that's it. Cards are going to the discard pile. I draw my remaining four cards. So now I've got my gunners. Yep. And I'm going to put that on to remind myself I haven't yet leveled up. Okay, let's switch over to turn three for the Wayward Covenant. What's it doing? Ah, now that is beautiful because that is, refer that is wanting to put two cubes on those two areas and as we saw earlier on those two areas are open seats so we got a little bit lucky it's taking that advancement which doesn't have a cannon or a battle ability so that goes in its mercantile pile but other than that it's not doing anything it moves its ship to there but it would place cubes and there are no cube there, there there are no islands to place cubes on so i i got i got lucky there with that uh we're now going to replenish that advancement i should have replenished this one as well and that was it. That was turn three. And there's no special abilities on the right-hand side of that card. Okay, so my go. I haven't leveled up yet, so let's have a look at my cards. We've got two gunners and we've got a crew. So I am going to level up one of the gunners because a level two gunner has a cannon on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slot that advancement into it. So the gunner goes up to level two. And now we're going to take our turn. So... Because I'm at this island, I am allowed to load that coin onto my onto my ship, and that will allow me um, to get lots of cargo. So yeah, I think I can do this. Um, yeah, we're going to do it. So what are we going to do? We are going to set sails. So my sails is going to be set to two. After I've set sails, I'm going to pick the coin up, put it onto my ship. I'm then going to play uh, that gunner for a barrel, that gunner for a barrel, that for a barrel, and that for a barrel. So I've got four barrels at home. One, two, three, four. Now, this card here actually has two abilities on it. The green line means it's got two separate abilities. Uh, I've used that ability. I haven't used the cannon ability yet. So what you can do is you can actually just... Um, you're supposed to mark these cards with cubes to show that you've used the abilities, but I'm just going to cover them up. So I've still got this ability left. And I think I'm going to have a bit of a fight with the merchant ship. I think. Or do I just buy the merchant ship? Oh. Well, I've got all of these... I've got all of this cargo now. I've got all of this cargo at home. So my first movement point is going to be to base. Now, now I'm at base, I can drop that coin off. Uh, and I can now load any of this stuff on. So, maybe I just go back here. Maybe I just go back here. Hmm. I mean, I do have this cannon. Is two cannons going to be enough? Two cannons is probably not going to be enough, is it? Just thinking, which of these upgrades do I want? Because that's a really cheap upgrade, but it's not its not great. That's a better one, but that's better for the captain. I think we're going to go there. So I'm going to load all of these five barrels onto my ship. <clears throat> I can store four of them on this area, and I'm going to put the other one here. Then I've got one more movement point where I go back here. I then spend three barrels to buy this advancement. So I now have two advancements. Uh, and then I'm going to dump these two barrels on the island. Is it worth doing that? No, I'll, I'll keep them on the ship. They're probably safer on the ship. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what I'm doing. Uh, how's everybody doing? Sleeve the cannon. Yes. So you can only sleeve the cannon at the end of your turn, as Florian says. And that is what we're about to do now. So I've bought my advances, I've used all of my abilities. We are done. We refill the advances on the on the board. Oh, that's the one we wanted. Um, I choose pirate mode or mercantile mode. We stay in mercantile mode. Lose on spent sales. Sleeve advances. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm, I, I have to sleeve one of them. I can't keep both. 
But this one, I think this is perfect for my captain's card. So this gunner is going to be upgraded with this. Okay, those cards all go to my discard pile. Now, I am about to draw another card and my deck is empty. So at this point, like most deck building games, you shuffle your deck and you draw four new cards. So what's also nice with this game uh, is your deck is 12 cards. It's always 12 cards. So that means that the cards that you upgrade, you are going to see them. It's not like you upgrade a card and you might only ever see it once. Yeah, your decks, your deck tends to be quite small in this game. Right, four cards. One, two, three, four. Little token to remind me, I have not yet leveled up. Okay, right, over to turn four. Yep, yeah, so we're on turn four for the Wayward Covenant. And we are now using this second row here. So the orange space means he's moving to harbour. Uh, this means he's going to explore there, but it's already been explored. So what he's doing, he's taking the advancement from that space and he's placing two cubes on it. So this is the space. I'd already explored it. He's taking that advancement. There's a cannon on it, unfortunately. So that goes there. And he's placing two cubes on it. That doesn't give him control of the island, though. But... We also have a special ability now on the right hand side. So if AI would drop at least five cubes in a battle, then it will fight me and it's not going to. So I'm, I've actually got away with it, but it's basically if it had the ability to drop five cubes in the battle, it would fight me, but it's not. It's only going to be dropping two. So we skip that bit. Otherwise, it gets one coin for every two cards in its mercantile pile. It only has one card in its mercantile pile, so it actually doesn't do anything. Oh, I've been quite lucky with these cards. But there we go. That is it. That is turn four for the AI. My go. I haven't leveled up yet. Let's have a look what we've got. We have a purser. We have the deck hand. We have another deck hand. And we have the buccaneer. Now, my buccaneer is already at level two. I'm tempted to increase my buccaneer to level three. Because one of the achievements is to have three characters at level four. So the buccaneer is going up to level three. Right, now I control this island, which means I can drop off the cargo, set my sails to two. In fact, do we need any more sails? I haven't got any more sails. And then load the cargo back on. If I want to do that. Oh, hang on, we're missing an advancement. And just to remind you, if you don't know the game, there are four boxes I've got off camera. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Anything from this row is for column one, uh, row, column. This is tier one, this is level two, this is level three, this is level four. So I'm taking them out of the things off camera, but I'm not just taking them all out of one place. In fact, if you look closely, you can see that's got a one on it, two, three, and those will have a four. <coughs> right. I have so many cubes in my hand, it's scary. So this is what we're going to do. We, <laughs> this is a bit crazy, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn the side camera on. And we are going to use my two sails to go one, two. And then I am playing the Buccaneer to place three cubes. And the, I've got a deck hand and I've got another deck hand. Now, how many cubes do I need to take control of it? Oh, I'll tell you what. Right, now, hang on. Undo, slight rewind. I'm going to spend one sail to go here. So my first sail is to go here uh, to Widow's Bridge. And while I'm at Widow's Bridge, I then play one deck hand to place one cube on Widow's Bridge. Now, what that does is that takes control of the island. Then I'm going to spend my second movement point to move here. We scoot over here. Um, we are now at Devil's Backbone. And while we're here, I'm now going to play the Buccaneer to place three cubes. And that third cube actually gets me control of that island because I have more cubes than the other player. And also I have more cubes than there are empty spaces. So what that does is that takes control of that island as well. Now I do have another deck hand in hand and I could, if I really wanted to, play this to place another cube. 
but I'm not sure I want to. I might save this card in hand because it has a battle ability on it. And that means I can use it when I'm attacked. So this is what I was saying earlier about you don't have to play all of your cards. I'm going to keep this card in hand. I am, however, going to play the purser. And the purser allows me to produce at any one island. Remember, you can produce any island. It doesn't have to be one you control. But I'm actually going to produce at Devil's Backbone because Devil's Backbone produces two barrels and two money. Now, this is a little risky because the AI might come along and try and steal that off me. But that's what I'm doing. Those are the cards that I've played. Oh, hang on a minute. I could load that cargo and then I could buy this advancement. Can I do that? I think I can. I think I absolutely can. Because that is an island which I control. So you can freely, during your turn, it's not an action, you can load the cargo from there onto your ship. And now, because I've got four barrels on my ship, I could buy this card. I think I think I can do that. So there we go. So I'm spending those four barrels. In fact, I can load the two coins as well. So that they're actually mine. And that way... If the AI was to sneak in and try and take control of it, yeah, I'm, I'm taking the coins. Right, this is awesome. So I've gained this advancement. Right, I think that's the end of my turn. I think I'm saving the deck hand. I'm keeping that in hand. So next turn I'll have five cards. I now have to sleeve one of these two advancements. And ideally, I would keep both of them. Because I want this card to go on my upgraded gunner. And I want this card to go on my captain. But I'm still going to save that for the captain. So I'm going to put this. This is going to go on. Where's it going to go? Hmm. I think it's going to go on the, the deck hand. Yeah, I can't save both of them. Yep, yeah, thank you very much, Successful Geek. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, so you can freely load to and from an island that you control. I'm so used to playing the purser and then have to, having to go and collect the, uh, the stuff afterwards. So I've done the upgrades. I'm going to keep this one. That's for the captain, okay? These cards go to my discard pile. The card that I have in hand is still in hand, and I draw four more. One, two, three, four. So I now have five cards in hand. And that means I haven't leveled up. Right. Turn five <coughs> for the Wayward Covenant. So, again, we're going on the middle row. We have no explorations because all of these have been seen. But it's ending up on the orange space. It's placing a cube there and there. And it is taking the advancement from both of those spaces. Okay. So let's have a look at the board. It's taking the advancement from here and from here. These are both, oh, well, that's a merchant ship. So we take that one first, put it in there. Then we flip a coin for this one. It's heads again. So it defeats the merchant ship. It gets another cube up there. It's almost got its first achievement. Uh, and we flip it over and we put it there because it doesn't have a cannon on it, right? So it took both of the achievements. It's placing a cube there, but it can't. It places a cube here. That, I believe, gives it control of the island. Yes. So it's now got control of that island. Uh, and if we look, we now have a couple of other icons. So this one here basically says, if I have taken three damage already, it will attack me. I haven't taken, oh no, I've taken one damage. So it doesn't attack me. Then it scores one coin for every two cards in its mercantile pile. It's got three, so it gets one coin. There you go, it has one coin. Uh, and then it will remove a damage. So if it had taken any damage, it would then basically heal one damage. Right, done. Time for a quick drink, because my throat is getting dry. <sighs> right. Let's find somewhere to put my drink without spilling it all over the game. My go. Time to replenish the areas on the board, which I think I'd forgotten to do. So that one goes there, that one goes there, and we have a level three one here. 
Oh, it's a cheap one. It only costs one. Right, my go. Is Paul playing against the easy AI, says Mr. John D. Clare. No, John, I'm not playing the easy AI. I'm playing the normal AI. <laughs> but yes, based on the fact that I've only played it once this afternoon, I'm, I'm sticking with the normal difficulty level for now. But I am curious, actually. This, this is a question for everybody watching, not John. If you've played this game solo, what difficulty level have you played on? Because I suspect that once you've played the solo mode of this game two, three times you should be able to beat it on the normal difficulty level. But I'm curious to see what you think. And if you're not watching this live, leave me a comment afterwards and, and let me know. I am always curious to see how many people have played solo modes. I assume John can beat it on the hardest difficulty level. <laughs> or did you just put the really hard difficulty level in there for those people who go, oh, it's still too easy. Right, what we're gonna do? Where am I? I'm here. I control this island. So uh, I can freely drop off my money temporarily. Have I leveled up? I, I haven't leveled up yet. Need to remember to level up. That's what the little piece is for, Paul. Um, am I going to level up? I think I might. Oh, there's a cannon there. I'm going to level up the crew. So I'm going to level up the crew to level two. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to set sails. Oh, it doesn't work. I've only got two sails. Hmm. Can I attack? I don't have a pirate flag. I can't attack. Oh! Do I have a purser? No. Oh, rats. I'm going to be having a short turn, I think. And I didn't draw the captain. Oh! Captain's on holiday. Right. We've done the level up. So I've set my sails. I've got two sails. I'm going to pick the money back up. I'm going to use the two sails. This is a really, really short turn. I can't really do very much. I'm going to move two spaces to here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So now if I'm going to draw four cards at the end of my turn, I need to play at least two cards this turn, otherwise I will go above my hand size. Because hand limit is normally six, but I've got control of this island, which means my hand limit is seven. Okay, so John can cons consistently beat the hard AI, but not the super bonkers one. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I th I th this is working very differently from the way it did this afternoon. I am going to save three cards from one turn to the next. I am now just going to play two cards just to get them out of my hand and that will be that crew and that first mate for two cargo at home and that's it that that is my turn is i moved two spaces to here and i played two cards done and i'm, I'm going to keep this advancement again because i need that i need to put that on the captain okay so i'm going into next turn with a hand size of seven Nice. Those get discarded. I draw four cards. One, two, three, four. And what's interesting about this game is you can level up any card in hand. So you can, if, if there is a card that you've got in hand that you deliberately want to level up, you can't play it that turn. You have to keep the card in hand and then you level it up between turns. Um, so it, it is an interesting strategy in that you could for the first three turns of the game, just keep the same card in hand and never play it and just keep leveling it up. And then you'd get a level four character quite quickly. Right. I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. That was a very weak turn, but my next turn is going to be awesome. So we are now on turn six. There's no six on the gaming rules dice. <coughs> okay. So it's moving its ship to there, which is where I am but it's also exploring there and placing three cubes. Okay, so it's doing an explore. It's reached level four, ouch. It places three cubes, which takes control of the island. We need a level four advancement, which it then takes. Yep, it takes the advancement straight away. So that goes in its mercantile pile. Um, right, 
And we now have this ability. So basically, if there are any coins and goods on an island which it doesn't control, it will place two cubes to try and control the island. Then what it's going to do is it's going to build a fort. So we haven't seen the buildings yet in this game, but what it's doing is it's building a fort on, an, on the island that it controls. And let's just have the sideways view on. So it controls this island. It also controls this island. So let me just look up the tie break. Uh, if multiple islands, it goes on the one with the highest value based on first place. This one's worth four, that one's worth four. If there are multiple islands that meet this condition, place it on the island with the highest combined coin and um, barrel production power. Two, two, still tied. Any further ties, you decide. So I'm going to put it, um, I'm going to put it here. So yeah, all of the tiebreakers are, are tied, so it, it goes there. And that's it. That is its turn. Now, it explored. I need another cube up here. So it's explored three times. I need to take evaluation of the current situation. Because I don't think I'm doing very well. I mean, I did have a fairly weak turn, last turn, but... Yeah, okay. My go. I'm going to level up one of my cards. That's totally what I'm doing. I'm going to level up the card. Just watch me. Do we level up the gunner? Do we level up the captain? There's the captain. We're going to level up the captain. So I'm leveling up the captain between turns. And my plan is that I'm going to upgrade the captain with this card at the end of my turn. So I'm definitely going to play the captain. Um, yes, thank you very much, Adam. Exactly right. Everybody assumes that I'm really good at games. No, I'm good at teaching games. I'm not that good at playing games. Um, and I, I just want to check one rule, actually, to see if um, the AI was going to attack me at the end of the turn. I don't think it was going to. When do battles occur? You can attack the Covenant ship as normal. Uh, on the Covenant's turn, it will attack your ship if it has an attack flag. Or if I'm in pirate mode and it's trying to place cubes. Yeah, OK, so just because it's ended the turn on the same space as me, does not mean that um, it's going to attack me. However, I've I've drawn I've drawn this captain's card. That actually gives me the ability to attack it if I want to. However, I've only got one cannon, and it's got it's got two cannons. So I'm not actually sure that I want to attack it. I do have a cannon here, so I'd have two cannons. It'd be two versus... Oh, no, I've got three. I've got three cannons. Should we attack? I think we should. Yeah, let's attack. Oh, if I was in pirate mode, it would have attacked me. Yes, John's telling me to attack, so I think that... I was thinking about that anyway. Um, so, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's play the captain's card. So you can't just attack people in this game. You have to play the pirate flag in order to be able to attack them. Uh, so I'm doing that. And we're having a combat. Now I've only got my one default cannon, but I am going to play this gunner card, which gives me an extra cannon and a barrel at home. I might as well do the barrel at home while I'm at it. And it gives me this cannon. So I've actually got three cannons. That's going to add three cubes into the fight. My opponent, as we know, has got two cannons. <coughs> that ability doesn't work because it says if this card has at least three cannons which it doesn't what's printed in the bottom right by the way is telling you what's what the, what you get for the next level can I get any other cannons no can't get any other cannons okay well this is what we're doing we're having a fight so it's three versus two let's go to battle cam oh one didn't go down where is it Come on. There's a cube that didn't fall in. There it is. Right. Okay. What have we got? Wow. Lots of cubes at the end. Oh, this is this is not good. Ah. Now I think I get to re-roll that one. 
So this one here is actually completely on the edge. It's not falling into either side. So I'm pretty sure you re-roll that one. I remember writing that in the rule book. Yeah, side view. Uh, this cube should be redropped. Okay, so that one is going to get redropped. Oh dear, it's not looking good, is it? Oh, perfect. That's what I needed. I needed a crown because remember, in a multiplayer game, the active player wins ties. But in a solo game, the Wayward Covenant always wins ties. So, first of all, spoils. Uh, let's do its spoils. It gets a coin and a barrel plus two additional barrels. So it's gaining one coin and three barrels. Now, any time it gets three barrels, it immediately just gets one coin. So it basically gets two coins for that. Uh, and I get four barrels. Yep, four barrels for me. Uh, now they go on my ship. One, two, three, four. <coughs> Uh, and then I've got one crown. So I got the crown, which means I win the fight. So I get a cube up there, and I deal one damage to it. Excellent. There we go. Ah, the Covenant always wins ship battles, but not building battles. Right, okay. Thank you very much for that. So there you go. It worked. And I got lots of, uh, lots of barrels out of it, which I can use to buy an advancement. Now... I'm then going to dump all of this stuff on the island temporarily while I set my sails and I'm going to set my sails to two. Then we're going to pick all of the stuff off of the island. You don't actually need to do that. I just like doing it. The rules say that if you are at an island you control, you treat your uh, cargo spaces as empty for the purposes of setting sails because what you're doing is you're unloading it, setting the sails and then loading it back on again. So I just like to go through the motions. Right, now then, I've got two movement points, so we could buy lots of cards. You can only buy two advancements a turn, but there's a really nice advancement over there that I quite like. Uh, and I'm tempted to keep this crew card in hand and level it up. Or do I want to level up the deck hand? Oh, I've just realised I've got this that gives me one crown. I've got a card in hand that I was keeping. So I could have used this card in the fight and it would have given me one crown. Um, so I, yeah, I would have won anyway, but I didn't need that. Right, what am I doing? What am I doing indeed? I kind of want this as well. This is quite nice. Okay, so here's my plan, is I'm going to use my two sails. I'm going to use one to sail home, dropping the two coins into my treasure chest. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to spend three barrels to buy this, up, to buy this advancement. So buy the advancement, sail here, drop off the coins. Then... So many barrels here. So many barrels. Hmm. And remember, I can still save cards from one turn to the next. I don't need to play all of these cards. But I do need to sleeve at least one of these advancements. I'm probably going to sleeve both of them. Oh, boy. We need to be upgrading the boson if we're going to... So that card's going to stay in hand. Because to buy upgrades, you need to upgrade the boson. Yeah. Go for the Widow's Bridge Advancement. Yeah, I was thinking about that, actually. Because that, on the Captain's card, will give it an extra one of those things. But I was thinking of buying a second advancement this turn. That's what I was thinking of doing. But I need to make sure that I have the sails ready for next turn. So I'm going to keep the deck hand in hand. I'm going to play that, that, and that to get four barrels. But then I'm going to use the ability of the crew. If I'm in port, if I'm in the harbour, I can spend two barrels from the harbour to heal one damage. So there you go. So I actually just get 
two more barrels in the harbour for these two cards. That's paid for itself. I've still got one sale left, and I'm going to use that one sale We could go really combat heavy in this game and really attack them. I'm thinking that one. Yeah. So I'm going to load. Hmm. <sighs> I'm going to load those three onto there. Remember, I've got one movement point left. No. Ugh. It's difficult decisions. It really, really is difficult decisions. Because um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to there, I'm going to spend one barrel, and I'm going to buy that advancement. That's what I'm going to do. So it's just a case of how many barrels do I want to bring with me because uh, from your harbour, if you don't know how to play the game, from your harbour you can go to any of these. So the, the entire harbour is adjacent to all three of these. Uh, it's not like that's that one and that's that one. It's not that. The reason why I'm deliberating is if I keep these barrels on here, I might end up next turn with only one movement point. No, I'm going to take four. I'm going to take four barrels with me. Okay. So that, I think, is my turn done. Right. Oh, John's just seen the Saga 3 box art today for me, and Nice. Well, if you want to send it to me, John, I, I promise I won't share it with anybody. But I'm really keen to see it. So, um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind sending me it, that'd be awesome. I will definitely not share it. Except maybe with the cats. And the cats don't have a social media account, so they're safe. Right, we're done. We're going to replenish the advancements. One. Two. I now must sleeve at least two of these. Well, we know that one's going in the captain card. So the captain is getting that. Definitely. Okay. Now, the captain could get another one. I, I could, if I really wanted to, slot another one in. But I don't need to, because the captain already has that on there. So I don't need to put another one on there. And I want to leave that free for the cannons. So I think we're going to put that on there. And I think we'll put the sails on there. No, we'll, we'll keep the sails. Do we keep the sails? No, I'm going to put the sails on. I'm going to put the sails on the crew as well. So that that's a really good card now. Yeah, we like that card. Okay, so that's all them done. I sleeved all of my advancements. They go there. I've kept two cards in hand for the next round. And now I'm going to shuffle my deck because I'm at... Um, my deck is empty. Yeah, basically every three turns you'll go through your deck. Well, the game's going well, and I'm enjoying it. I've no idea whether I'm doing well or not, but we'll find out. One, two, three, four. Counter to represent the fact that I haven't levelled up yet. Okay, now we go on to turn seven for the Wayward Covenant. So turn seven, we're now on this middle row, so lots of stuff is happening. It's exploring that place, it's taking both of those advancements, and it's putting two cubes on there. Okay, so let's do that first. It's exploring here. Unfortunately, it's doing a lot more exploring than I am. So it explores there. It gets another exploration cube on there. We get a level three advancement there. It's taking both that advancement and that advancement. So that's got a cannon on it. It goes there. This is a merchant ship. Tails. What does it do on tails? It's never done this before. <laughs> um, ba -ba 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 -ba. If tails, the Covenant keeps the advancement on the front side. Okay, so it basically makes a deal with it and it keeps that one. Otherwise it would have fought it and, and got a cube up there. 
Um, so it's done that, it's done that. It's placing two cubes on here. Now it doesn't need to place two cubes. It only needs to place one. And then we have this icon. So again, this icon says, is there an island on the board with stuff on it that it doesn't control? No, there isn't. Then it produces. So what it's going to do is it's going to pick the island with the best production. Now, quick note, and I have confirmed this with John, but there is a slight error in the solo rulebook. So in the solo rulebook, when the AI produces, it says, if you see a production icon, the covenant produces on the highest production island it controls. There is a missing icon there. It should be the highest coin production island it controls. So if you've got the game, or if you're going to get the game, uh, page five, there's a missing coin icon on there. I will let AEG know about it, so hopefully they can fix it in the next print run. Um, but yeah, I've confirmed that with John earlier on today. So what we do is we look at, the, I mean, this island is two coins. That's one coin in a barrel. So it's this coin. And unlike human players, where it would produce on the island and then you'd have to go and pick it up, the AI just gets it straight away. So let's swap some money over. It's now got 21 coins. And then what it does is it places a cube in here to represent that it now has one character of level four. If it gets three of them, it gets that achievement. Uh, and that's it, that's, that's turn seven done, I think. Right, my go. I think that's my go. I think I've done everything right. I'm gonna level up one of my cards. Which, which card do I wanna level up? Well, I was hoping to get one with that on it, which I have. Nice. Isn't that the one I just upgraded? Yes, it is. Oh, well, that's, that's handy. That was lucky. Um, oh, and I got the Buccaneer again. Oh, now that's going to be nice, because that means I can sneak in there and take control of that island from him. I like that idea. Let's get some more cards out. Let's get some more advancements out. <coughs> right. Oh, I was going to level up the bosun. If I don't level up the bosun soon... I'm not going to be doing any upgrades. So that's the one I'm going to be leveling up. We are going to be leveling up the boats into level two. It's only level three that allows them to, to upgrade. So I'm, I'm going to keep the boats in hand and I'm going to upgrade the, I'm going to level up the boats again at the end of my turn. So what have we got? We've got sails, we've got cubes, we've got all sorts of stuff. We could take control of that island. Let's do it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Buccaneer. I'm going to put three cubes on here. One, two, three. That takes control of that island. So that island is mine. Right. Then I can unload all of my cargo, set my sails at three, and getting two more barrels at home. So I've gained, I've got three sails, one, two, three, <coughs> and I could attack if I wanted to, but I don't think I want to. Oh, hello. I've just spotted another ability. That's quite nice. I'm then going to load these barrels back on. Do I want to load all of them back on? Yes, because we might need some of these advancements. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a great card. Would that be good on the captain? That'd be good on the bosun. I think we might have that card. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of choices that have opened up to me now, and I'm not quite sure what to do. So I've, I've done the buccaneer. The buccaneer is done. I've gained the sails from the crew and I've gained that. The only the only icon from the crew card that I haven't gained is the pirate flag, which would allow me to attack if I wanted to. But I'm not sure I do. I think I might go exploring. Yeah. So I'll play the gunner for another barrel at home. Um... I mean, I've got a cannon, and I've got a battle ability. One, two, three, four. I've only got three sails. 
Probably insane attack. No. <laughs> yeah, but I do want that. Although that's really nice as well. Oh, there's so much good stuff. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. This might be not the right thing to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. I am going to use my three sails. I'm going to go one, two. I'm then going to spend my four barrels to buy this advancement. I'm then going to play... Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to play this deck hand. So this deck hand is interesting. So the deck hand allows me to place a cube on the island I am, but also it has this ability that for every cannon on this card, which is one, I can put a cube and up to two of them may be placed on an adjacent island. So what I can do is I can place a cube on this island, and then if I wanted to, I could put this one on an adjacent island, but I'm not going to. I'm actually just going to put it on that island itself. And then I'm going to play another deck hand to put another cube on there. Now that doesn't take control of the island, but it does get me three cubes on it, <clears throat> which is pretty good. I'm keeping the bosun in hand. And that is my go done. So we get a new advancement come out here. Oh, it would be, wouldn't it? Do I want to sleeve this? Or do I want to keep it? I just need to have a look at my captain. Yeah, no. that That's that's being saved for the captain. I'm going to reshuffle my deck again. So, that advancement is saving. These cards go to my discard pile. I draw four new cards. One, two, three, four. Put that marker on to remind me that I need to level up. And that is my turn done. I think I'm happy with that. <clears throat> is the AI kicking my butt yet? Possibly, Richard. How Have you played this solo, Richard? I know you've played it multiplayer quite a bit, but I don't know if you've played it solo. So, um, turn eight. Oh, it's exploring again. Right, it's got its first achievement. So it's exploring up in the corner. That's where it's going to move to. And it's placing two cubes. So it's exploring here. Which is level four. It's moving its ship to there. And it takes that advancement. And this advancement. And it's placing two cubes up on there. Now, that's lucky. There's no cubes for it to place there. But it is taking these two. So that one goes there and it's attacking another merchant ship. It's heads. So it defeats it. That goes there. Now, all sorts of stuff is going to happen. It has now explored five times. What that means is it's got that achievement. And in a two player game, there is now no way that I can get that achievement because I only had two cubes on there. You need five of them in a two player game. And there were only two spaces left to explore. So I'm just going to remove my cubes. It's also done its fourth fight. Uh, so as soon as it's done a fourth fight, it gets that achievement. So it's got two achievements. Now remember what I said right at the start. Four achievements, game over. Um, it hasn't got this one yet. It's it started to do this one. Uh, it can never do that one. It's got 21. It's nowhere near that one. It's nowhere near that one. Okay, now. We're, we're all right. Game's not going to be over just yet. <laughs> I think it was like 10 rounds this afternoon. 10 or 11 rounds. Uh, and yeah, we've got ocean tiles. One, two, three. Possibly that's an ocean tile as well. They're completely randomised. In a two-player game, there are four ocean tiles, but they're all shuffled up and completely randomised. Anyway, let's go back to the card. The card now says, um, if I've taken three damage, it will attack me. It then heals up to three damage. And it's, getting, it's taking an upgrade card. Oh dear. It's taking a super, uh, an advanced upgrade tile, which basically means it's now got an extra two cannons. That's not good. That's not good at all. 
Oh, it suddenly kicked things up a gear, hasn't it? 12 to 13 rounds this afternoon. Okay, right. We're more than halfway. I am looking forward to that Jaffa cake bar. Right, my go. I'm going to level up. I don't, I, I've, I've kind of lost direction now. I kind of don't know what it is that I'm trying to do. <clears throat> the good news is that I'm, I'm in control of a lot of the islands. That's going to get me quite a lot of points at the end of the game. We're levelling up the bosun. That's what we're doing. We are levelling up the bosun to level 3. Now this is really important because the bosun is the only character and only when they get to level 3 that can buy upgrades. So that's what I've levelled up and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play it. He says. Or do I save it? <laughs> do I save it? Oh, well, we know that that's going on there. So the captain's definitely being played this turn. Oh, see how many cannons has he got now? <clears throat> he's got one, two, three. He's got five cannons now. I've only got one, two, three. Yeah. Ugh. I don't want to attack just yet. Right, what's my plan this turn? I've got a purser, so I probably want to produce. Now there's a really good island here. This island produces two barrels and two coins. It is a nice island. I like that island. Are we missing a card? We're missing some cards, aren't we? That should be there. And that should be there. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's amazing for the captain. Yeah, that, with that on the captain, is amazing. How do I get four cargo? Oh, I don't think I can. Oh, if only the purser was upgraded. Do we have a change of plan? Do we not upgrade the bosun? If we upgrade the purser... I can produce there and there. I can then move there and there, pick up all of the cargo. It's still not enough. Oh, but that card is amazing. So. So many choices. Hmm. Right, well, I'm going to play the purser. And I'm going to produce on this island, which is my island, so I can freely come and pick the stuff up. It generates two coins and two barrels. Right, that's the purser done. I am then going to play the... If I keep the bosun, I can upgrade it to level 4. I think that's what I was doing, wasn't I? I think I was upgrading it. So, sales. I've got two sales. I'm setting sales. I've got two. I, can't, I don't think I can get any more. I can buy this card, though. I could, in fact, go there and there and buy both of those cards. Because that's a really good card as well. They're both really good cards. <sighs> do we do that? kind of feels that I'm just sort of stagnating a little bit in the middle. But, hmm... Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. So I'm going to use my two sails. I'm going to move one sail to move here. I'm going to load this cargo onto my ship. I'm going to spend that cargo to buy that advancement. Then I'm going to use the other movement point. Do I take the two coins with me? Yeah, I'm going to take the two coins with me. 
and the other barrel. We're then going to use the other movement point to move there and spend that barrel to buy that advancement. Okay, so that's my movement points used. That's all my barrels spent. Now I've still got all these cards. And I still want to play. I need to play the captain in order to put that, that advancement on it. So I'm going to play the captain, which generates me one barrel at home for each of those icons on this card, of which there's two. So I get two barrels at home. I'm then playing the first mate, which is just an extra one barrel at home. Now, if you get 12, that's an achievement. Um, and then what do we do with this gunner? Do we play it? Do we keep it? I think we keep it. So the gunner is being kept. That's two cards that I'm keeping from one turn to the next, which is fine. It's fine. I've just realized my hand limit is actually eight. Okay, so now sleeving of advancements. Uh, let's replenish the ones on the board first. We have a three there. And we have a three there. Oh, look at that! Right, so that's being sleeved in the captain. Look how good this captain is now. So that's going in there. So you see this. I now, when I play this card, I get two barrels at home because there's two of those icons on the card. And I produce two money on an island for every icon on that card of which so i'm going to get four money on an island when i play this card so that's amazing um i've also got these and i, I think i'm going to play both of these together on the first mate there you go so the first mate is upgraded as well uh what did i think of oscar isaac's attempt at a british accent in moon knight i've not seen moon knight yet um, so yes, but I think Oscar Isaac is a great actor. I've got one sale left. Do I have one sale left? No, I went one, two. I only had two sales. Um, yeah, I think Oscar Isaac is a great actor. So I've, I've not heard his attempt at a British accent. Is he not British? I thought for some reason, I thought Oscar Isaac was British. Where am I getting that from? I don't know. Right. I'm drawing four cards. Why have I got two cards in my discard pile? I think something's gone wrong. <laughs> I think something might have gone wrong here. I don't quite know what's gone wrong because for some reason I only have two cards in my deck. I've got distracted by chatting about Moon Knight. Um, yeah, I don't quite know what's happened, but He's from Guatemala, is he? Not British then. Maybe I've seen him in something else where he was putting on a British accent. Um, yeah, that's, that's my excuse anyway. Right, I think we're good. So I kept two cards. I've drawn four more. And that's going on there. Right. Next. Turn nine. We are on the last of the middle row. So it's basically placing three cubes on that island. And it's taking the advancement. And that's where it's going to move to. So it's moving to here. It's placing three cubes. Now that's not enough to take control of it, interestingly. So nobody's got control of this island yet because we've both got three cubes on here. So yeah, nobody controls that island yet. But it is taking this advancement which is a battle ability, so it goes on its pirate pile. Okay, so that's that done. Next, is there an island on the board that it doesn't control that has goods on it? No. Then it's going to build a outpost. So it's building an outpost. Now that's going to boost its production. So where does it build its outpost? Um, the highest value island. Uh that it controls, which is there or there, which is four or four. So I'm going to split it and I'm going to put it on. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, we're going to split it. We're going to put it on there because I could go in and control that um, and I could take it back. So this is worth four. That's worth four. So I think it's. Yeah, the highest combined production. Right. OK, got it. Um, what else is it doing? 
Ah, he's got a special ability. It says, after end of turn, place two coins on the highest value island the AI controls. So basically, it's tempting me. Um, it's putting two cubes on the highest value island. That's four, that's four. And if I can go in there and seize control of the island, I can grab those coins quickly. So that's it. That's its turn done. That was turn nine. So now it's my go and I'm going to level up a card. And I think I might, I might use this as an opportunity to try and go in. Have I got my Buccaneer? I have. So I can go in, steal control of the island, destroy the building. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. So we are going to level up the bosun. Right, I now have a level four bosun. What that means is, I when as soon as you get a level four card, you put a cube on here. Three level four cards, and you've done the achievement. So I've played the bosun. Um, the bosun gets either one cargo at home, or I can spend three for a basic upgrade, or six for an advanced upgrade. I am spending six barrels at home. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, those six barrels could actually come from anywhere, but I'm going to spend them at home to take one of the advanced upgrades. Now, do I want the ones with the cannons? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be attacked. So I think I'm going to take the one with the cannons. There you go. And it's going to go there. Okay, nice. Now... I kind of want to drop one cube on this island, which I can do with the deck hand. So I'm going to play the deck hand to drop one cube on this island, which takes control of it. Nice. Okay. How many permanent cubes have I got? One, two, three, four, five. How many do I need? Six. Six for the achievement. Right. Okay, now I control the island. I can drop the money off temporarily and set sails. I've got two sails. And then load the money back on. Right. So I have two sails. I'm going to use the first of those sails to move to here. Okay. When I arrive here, you'll like this. Not a lot. Um... But yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my super, super Buccaneer, my level three Buccaneer, and drop three cubes on the island. So you haven't seen this yet, but whenever you drop cubes on an island, if there isn't space, what you do is you actually take off one of the opponents. So there's only three spaces on this island. So all those three have gone. Those three arrive. I now take control of the island, which means I gain a permanent cube there. I now have six permanent cubes on the board, which means I have got my first achievement. I've got that. Okay. And whenever control of an island changes, the buildings get destroyed. And that is now my island, which means I can pick up the money. Lols. Right. Now, what do we want to do? We've still got one movement left. I don't have any barrels whatsoever, so I think I'm just going to use that one movement to go here, and then is there any of these cards that I want to play, or do I just want to keep them? I might actually just keep them. Yeah, I'll keep them till next turn. So those three cards are kept, keep being kept in hand. I didn't buy any advancements that turn. People are saying fight. <laughs> I'm not going to fight. Um, but those go to my discard pile. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Happy with that turn. Draw four more cards. One, two, three, four. Put the counter on to remind me that I haven't leveled up. And now, replenish the advancements. Don't need to do that. Right, now we go to turn 10. So turn 10, we're now on the fourth layer down, the fourth row. So it's really starting to get quite powerful now. Um, so it goes there, there, and there. They're all explored. It's moving its ship to here. It's going to place a cube there, two cubes there, and it's going to take the advancement in the corner. So it takes this advancement. 
it's placing two cubes. Ah, interesting. It's taking two cubes, it put, placing two cubes here. So the first one kicks mine off, which doesn't change control because we've now got four cubes each. But then its next one does kick that cube off, which does take control of the island. So it gets a cube there. So it's got one, two, three permanent cubes now. Uh, and then finally, it's placing a cube down here, which kicks that one off. Okay, so we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. Okay, what other icons do we have on this card? If I've taken three damage, it will attack me. No. Then it will heal a damage. It will gain money based on its mercantile pile. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got eight cards in its mercantile pile. That means it generates four money. Wow. That's a lot of money. Okay, and then finally, if there is a merchant ship on an ocean board, there is not. It, the AI defeats it. Okay, so that's only if there's a merchant ship on an ocean board. These are the ocean boards. These are island boards, I believe. I think that's the right terminology. Let me just double check. Oh no, they are called ocean boards. They're all called ocean boards. Okay, right, ignore what I just said. So there is a merchant ship on an ocean board. The AI defeats it. So we just flip it over and it gets it. Done. Uh, there's no need to mark that because it's already got that achievement now. <sighs> it's really ramping up, isn't it? I, I think if the game were to end now, it's a lot lower scoring than it was this morning. This afternoon, sorry. But I, I don't think I'm in a good position. We'll have to see. Anyway, it's my turn. It's my 10th turn. And I'm going to level up a card. Now... What am I going to level up? I've got the captain. I can try and get the captain to level three. That gives me, gives me a battle ability. And I think I might be having an attack. I think we need to do an attack, don't we? Now, if I upgrade the captain, I will get a battle ability. Let me just have a look at what that battle ability is. battle. Not against buildings. If you win, get a coin for everything on there. Right, but that's if I win. Hmm. The other option is that I upgrade this gunner to level three, because I know what the level three gunner's battle ability is. It's to put two extra cubes in there. Let's do that. Let, let's go for a fight. So we're going to upgrade the gunner and this is one of the nice things with this game. It's kind of a little bit sandboxy um, in that you can play it sort of however you want. And normally I don't go for attacking much in this game. Um, but I think this time round, just because of the way things have come about, I think that's what I'm going to do. Right. So. Let's work out what's going on. Sales. I've got seven cards in hand, which I'm allowed to have. In fact, my hand size, I'm allowed to have eight. So we're playing that in the fight. Hmm. I could, could kick him off. Oh, I've got loads of, loads of cubes. Yeah, I've got too many cubes now. Um, I mean, I can just keep that till next time. So we are setting sails, which is two, because I'm temporarily unloading them onto this island. And then, in fact, do I want to leave them on the island? Oh, no, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. I can use my two sails. I can move one to here, dropping off these four coins, adding them to the four, seven coins there and the three in front of the ten. Changing up, right? Still got one sail left. We then use that sail to move to here. Okay. And now 
I am going to play, so I've not played any cards yet. I've not played any cards or any abilities yet. So I am going to play the captain using the pirate flag from the captain to allow me to do an attack. Um, but before I do that, <laughs> before I do that, so let's just rewind slightly. There was four coins on my ship and I was here. Because you can do these things in any order. So I'm going to play the captain card, but I'm going to use the first ability, which is to generate two money on any one island for each of those icons on this card. So I generate another four money on this island before I leave. I then pick up that four money and put it into here. I then move to here and drop off that money and then move another one here. Uh, I'm also going to use that ability to put two barrels on there and then we're attacking so yeah you can do all sorts of abilities and it recommends that you mark the abilities with cubes once you've used them um, if if you're struggling to, to, to keep track so we are going into a fight I have three cubes in fact I'm gonna to have to use these cubes to mark those because I've run out of cubes so three cubes for my three cannons yep I accidentally stole four coins from the Covenant's pile. Did I? Oops. <laughs> Thank you. Well spotted, Andrew. Sneaky pirate. Yes. Um, so I've got three cannons for my ship. I'm then going to play this gunner, which gets me an additional two cannons. And then I'm going to play the deck hand that gets me I've just realized something. There is a cube limit in this game. And I remember this when writing the rules. And I think I have reached my cube limit. Um, and it's a deliberate limitation on the number of cubes that you have. So each player has. It doesn't actually say. Surely it does. Surely it must say how many cubes you get each. Ah oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Thirty. So I've got 30 cubes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Yeah, so I've got 30 cubes on the board. And there is a rule in there. In the rule, some, in the rule book somewhere, there is a thing about when you reach your component limit. And if anybody wants to tell me what page it's on uh, for, for when I find it, um, because you can remove cubes from the board um, if I really want to. And I think I might have to do that at this stage because otherwise I'm not dropping as many cubes into the battle as I want to be. So I need to pick areas on the board where I'm happy to remove cubes from. But yeah, you can take them from islands, but you can't change control of the island. Okay. So we've got three cannons. I've got two cannons from there, and I've got one cannon from here. So there's my six. Because I've got, I've got a battle ability to drop two cubes. We'll see what happens, okay? The Wayward Covenant has one default cannon, plus two, so it's got three, and then it's got one, two, it's got two extra cannons, so it's got five. This is going to be a big fight, okay? Are you ready for a big fight? So this is six cannons for me, five cannons for the Wayward Covenant. And if I wanted to, I could drop an additional two cubes into the fight. Even the achievement temporary cubes are part of the limit. Yes, they are. Absolutely, they are. Right, here we go. They're, they're being dropped in. Okay, uh, did, did this one fall out and over the edge? <laughs> How many was he getting? Yeah, I think that one actually bounced over the edge. So, right, okay, let's have a look at what we've got. <clears throat> First of all, are there any exploding shots? No. In terms of crowns, I've got three crowns. 
it's got one. So I've won the fight. I don't need to drop two additional cubes in there. So I'm not going to. So let's look at the spoils of war. I get a coin and a barrel. Two more barrels. So that's one coin and three barrels. One coin, three barrels. Okay. The AI gets uh, one coin and a barrel and one coin or a barrel and one barrel. So two coins and two barrels. Two coins, two barrels. It's already got a barrel, so it converts that into a third coin. Okay. That's the spoils of war. Now, damage, the yellow cube has got two damage here, so I take two damage, but I've hit it for two as well. So that, that's a bloody fight, that is. Two damage each. Wow. Okay, but then, that's that gone and that gone, but then I win the fight, because I've got three crowns as opposed to it's one. So the battle is over. Um, it takes an extra damage because I won the fight. And I get a cube up there to say that I have now won two fights. <clears throat> so I'm definitely running short of cubes now. I've only got five cubes left to play with. Uh, right. It's still my go. I mean, I, I did that fight. I have no sales left. But I still have other abilities like this one. So I can place up to two cubes, no, one cube, one cube. So I'm gonna put that cube on there, kicking that one out. Why not? Because I'm running short of cubes. Um, I need to keep that first mate, that's staying in hand. Do I wanna bother with these? I'm probably gonna go back next turn. I haven't quite got enough cargo to buy that card. Ah, and I have no movement left. Hmm. Oh, in fact, I've got a cube on the... No, no, that's fine. <coughs> yeah, I've got a cube on the deck hand, so I can actually use that to kick that one off and that to put that one on there. Yeah, okay. I don't know whether that's the right thing to do or not, but... By removing them from control of an island, it means they're not even getting the secondary points. How are we doing with these achievements? It's close to getting this one, which is have 30 coins. It's very close to this one. I'm not close to that one. This one we're nowhere near. That one we're nowhere near. That one we're nowhere near. That one I've done. Yeah, we're not actually close at all. What am I doing with these three cards? They are rubbish cards. I think I'm just going to keep them. I think my turn is done there. That didn't go as well as I thought. I thought I was going to get more stuff out of that. Yeah, I mean, I won the fight, but I didn't actually get many spoils. And I can't afford to buy the card. So yeah, we're done. Those go to my discard pile. Uh, those stay there. Uh, with the first mate, have I got a hand size of eight? Yeah, my hand limit is eight. Excellent. So I can keep the first mate. I'm drawing another four. So one, two. Give these a shuffle. Yeah, I've somehow got out of sync with my cards and I don't know how. Never mind. So, okay, and I'm going to level up between turns. Right, okay, over to the AI. We're now on round 11, and it's doing this. So, in fact, it's not doing much this turn. It's simply, oh, we need some advancements. Uh, it's simply moving its ship to there. But it's what's here that it's doing. So, if not in harbour, it's going to attack me. Oh, it's going to get its revenge, and it gets plus one cannon for this battle. Then it's going to produce, then it's going to get points. But first of all, if I'm not in a harbour, it's attacking me. So just after one big fight, we are now having another big fight. So it gets one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got six cubes. 
How many have I got? Well, I've got three. <laughs> so, which card do I want to level up? This, this might not be good. This might not be good at all. I'm going to level up this gunner to level four. So I have a level four gunner. Okay. Now, thankfully, you can only complete these achievements on your turn. So although I've got a level four card now, I don't actually mark that yet until it's my turn, which is good because I need a cube. Um, so, but I'm going to have to remove some of my cubes from, from islands because I'm going to play this gunner in self-defense, which has got two cannons on it. So I'm going to remove those two to give me two cannons. I think I'm doing this right. Um, yes, I am being cubed out. Because it's a two-player game, which means I've got loads more cubes on the board than you would normally have in a three- or four-player game, I think. I've also got one additional cannon here, if I really want to. Hmm. <laughs> Do I want to? No, I'm going to keep that because I do have the ability to drop two cubes if I want to. Okay, so here we go. Another big fight. Yeah, I am going to try and sink him, but he might sink me in the process. We might end up with a mutual destruction here, which I don't think I've ever seen in a game. So that'll be fun. Have you ever seen two ships destroy each other at the same time? I'm sure John has because he's played it 200 times. But here we go. and get all the cubes so that they go in okay what have we got <coughs> have we got anything hanging over an edge no we don't but i have lost this fight because there's one crown there and two crowns there and i've got two crowns so i've lost the fight unless unless i decide to drop two more cubes in Oh, and look at that. He's totally blowing me up. Oh, I've got an exploding shot. Ah, so the first thing is I've got an exploding shot, which means I pick up this and one other cube, which I'm going to have to remove from somewhere on the board, and I put them in again. Oh, this changes everything. It's like love. What have we got now? Oh, right. Now, has that changed the situation? No. We're now tied. Oh, where's my special ability when I need it? It's not there. Oh, rats. <coughs> it doesn't matter because I think we've, I think we've blown each other up. We've definitely blown each other up. Now, have I used my battle ability yet? I haven't. I haven't used my battle ability. So, can I, okay, I need, I need to find that rule on cubes, wherever it is, and I remember writing it, I just don't know where it ended up in the rule book. Uh, running out of cubes, any time you need one or more cubes but don't have any, you may remove that many of your non-permanent cubes from any islands and use them as the cubes you need but you may not remove cubes that result in the change of control of an island. Right, okay. So I can't... I can't take these cubes out and drop these. I'm going to have to... We've got to do it. We've, we've got to do it. So, let's have a look at the board. I'm going to remove that cube, because that doesn't change control of the island. I can't remove that one. I can't remove that one. I can't remove that one. I could remove that one. That doesn't change control of the island. So I'm going to remove that one. Okay, so I'm going to take these two cubes and I'm going to drop them in. Yeah, Covenant is still alive by one, but they're not because I have the ability that I can remove one of my cubes to deal one damage. So they're, they're totally going down. Right, here we go. I'm going to drop two more cubes in and we'll see what we get. Right, we've got an exploding shot. So that 
is another cube that's going to get added in. Oh, which means I've got to remove another cube from an island. Oh, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. This is just crazy. Two more cubes going in. <laughs> oh, I just got another crown. I think, is that a win? I think that's a win. Wow. What an epic fight. Okay, let's go through this. <coughs> so, first of all, battle abilities. I'm going to remove one of my cubes to deal one damage and gain two coins. I'm going to remove this cube to deal one damage to my opponent. So my opponent now has four flames and I gain two money on my ship. Right. That's it. Battle abilities have all been done. Yes, Mark, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, so now we do spoils of war. So I'll do the AIs first. It's only got that one, which is two barrels. Wow, that's it. Two barrels. Me, I've got a coin, which I'll put on the ship. And that's a coin or a barrel. So I'll have another coin. Okay, oh, and I've got these two down here, which is a coin and a barrel. So that's two more coins and two more barrels. Two more coins, two more barrels. I'm probably going to have to throw a lot of this stuff overboard. I don't have the capacity for it. Yeah, no, the barrels are going over sea. <coughs> right. Then, damage. I deal one damage and sink it, and it deals five damage to me and sinks me. So we have mutual destruction, which is pretty awesome. And then I win the fight because I've got two crowns. I've got four crowns and it's got three crowns. Yeah, there you go. That was the most epic fight that I've ever seen in this game. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Right. So what happens when a ship sinks? <laughs> Pirate life. OK, so battles. A ship that has five or more now sinks. Page 21. Um, oh, so I get a cube up there. That's still not enough. I still need one more cube. Um, right, it's so page 21. If a ship has five or more at the end of the battle, it sinks. Um, if your ship receives its fifth not during a battle, it sinks immediately. If you have five or more on your ship, immediately lose all of the coins on your ship. Oh. <laughs> if you have fewer than five coins on your ship, keep them there and lose five from your treasure chest instead cargo on your ship is not lost when you are sunk. So in fact, there was no point me taking uh, that. I might as well keep it as cargo. Yeah. That's a shame. So, I lose all of the money on my ship. Okay. Um, place your ship at harbour. Remove all the damage. Move any money on it to the treasure chest. Well, there wasn't any money on it to the treasure chest. How can there be any money on it to the treasure chest? I don't understand that. It says, when your ship sinks... Oh, if you have five or fewer, keep them there and lose five from your chest instead. Right, okay. Ship goes to mercantile mode, sail set, sail set to zero. If another player was the cause of your ship sinking then that player gains the five that you lost instead of them being put into the supply. So that five money actually goes to the other player. Okay? No pirate take backs. What have I done? Oh, the first time you've seen the cube rule in action. Yep, that's, that's how it is. Yeah, what did I notice? Oh, careful how many coins you put on your ship. Yeah, there you go. Slightly fixed it. Um, but yeah, so 
there's nothing in the rules about mutual destruction, but I guess you just do the same thing for both. However, the disappointing thing is the AI doesn't have any coins on the ship. So I actually don't get anything. That's a real shame. But we both get the achievement for sinking another player's ship. So actually that didn't work out for me at all because I lost five coins and my opponent gained five coins. Yep, I think that's right. I think I've done the rules right. Do I get five coins from the Covenant? Oh yeah, because it didn't have any coins on the ship. You're right. So it lost the coins from its harbour, which I gained. So actually, it was a mutual thing. Right, but... I, I mean, the game's going to be over very soon now because I now have 30 money. It doesn't quite have 30 money. I mean, it's not even my turn yet, is it? No, we're, we're still on its turn. So it's done the fight. Now it's producing on the island that it controls. So it produces here and gets two money, which means it now does have 30. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, so it's got another achievement, which is four achievements, which triggers the end of the game. Uh, and then it gains one money for every two mercantile cards. One, two, three, four. What an epic end to the game. So the end of the game has been triggered. Okay, because it's got four achievements, so I take my last turn. Now, did I level up? I did level up. So... I've now got a second level four character, which means I can put a cube on there. <sighs> right. I don't know what it is that I'm now trying to do. I've only got... Oh, I, and I get this achievement as well because I've got 30 coins in my chest. What is it that I'm going to try and do that gets me as many points as possible? Um, I mean, I could produce. Have I leveled up? I have leveled up. In fact, there's no point placing that cube there because I'm not going to get a third one. Yeah, try to bump off yellow cubes on islands. Or at least just get one here. Oh no, I've got one here. I've got second place. No, I've got third place. Because the empty spaces count. That's going to be tricky. I, I've managed to bump them off everywhere. I've not got rid of that permanent cube. I can put more cubes on the board. Ah, I've got all of these. We can probably get this achievement for spending 12 barrels. I'm pretty sure we can. Um, so, let's do it. Let's play that card, first mate. Oh, I've just found lots of cubes. I've got loads of cubes now. What have I been doing wrong? No, I've got, I've got loads of cubes. I'm all right for cubes. Um, but I'm going to use the black ones to mark these abilities. So I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. I get three barrels at home. How many is that? 5, 10, 11. I need one more barrel at home, which is the crew card for one more barrel is 12 barrels. I then spend those 12 barrels. I get that achievement. It's two points. Okay. What else do we want to do? Well, we might as well play all of our cards because this is the last turn of the game. So I will set sails. I've got three sails. Wow, I've not really done much in the way of upgrades, have I at all? I've not scored second place. Look at my earlier message. Is that, is that for there? Yeah, I think I'm third place because the, the empty spaces count. Fight him in the harbour. No, I don't want to fight him. Although if I do fight him and win, I get five points. But he does get four extra cubes for the harbour. So I, I, I don't think I want to fight him, to be honest. <coughs> I'm not in the mood for fighting. Um, so we're going to produce on an island I control. We'll produce here. Two coins, two barrels. 
because that, that's mine at the end of the game. So that's that done. Um, yeah. So I've basically got lots of cubes that I can put on the board. And I've got three sails. So I can get here. That might be my best move. And I can buy some advancement cards on the way. So I play these two cards to generate two barrels at home, which I load onto my ship. I then go one, two, three, buying this advancement on the way through and this advancement on the way through. And then I land here. And then I place uh, one, two, three, four cubes on here. So one, two, ah. Now, when the end of the game has been triggered, it costs extra to bump off another player. So all I can do is that, which is not enough to take control of the island, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That still gets me second place. I've got two extra points if I would have taken that cube from the other island during battle. Oh, okay. I might have missed a couple of points. We're done. I think we're done. Wow. I get to sleeve these two advancements. I don't think you level up at the end of your turn when the end of the game has been triggered. So we're now going to count the points. Okay. Whew. If there's anything that I've done wrong, speak now or forever, forever hold your peace. But we're now going to go through the end game scoring. Uh, what is the advancement in the open sea tile? Uh, it wasn't a merchant ship. <coughs> oh, you mean up there? Yeah, I didn't draw it. But I couldn't have got there anyway. It was a big expensive one. Right, okay. This has been fun. This has been really, really good fun. And that epic fight was fantastic. I could have taken control of the island. Could I? I'm not sure how. I only had four cubes. And it was one, two. Oh, you mean if I'd have taken them from here instead of here earlier? Yeah, yeah. In the fight, if I'd have took them from here instead of here, that would have given me control of the island. Okay, good point. Well, we'll see how we get on. So, achievements. So we gain the value of the achievements. This is my money. I've got 31 so far. And my opponent has uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 34. In terms of actual coins, it's 31 to 34. Right, so first of all, achievements. Uh, my opponent gets 5, 6, 7, 12, 15. 15 money for achievements. I've got 2, 4, 7, 10. Nah. Okay, so I'm still behind. Um, next, buildings. My opponent has one building. This has been a very building light game. Um, yeah, one building. That's it. Oh, I get this money for that island because I control that island. Okay. Next. End of game ad advancements. None of those. So one coin for every two advancements on cards. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's five money. Okay, my opponent has one, two, three, four, and a half, five, six, seven. Seven coins. Okay, let's trade up. That's another ten. Okay, yeah, he's quite far ahead of me at the moment. Ship upgrades. I get two coins for a ship upgrade. My opponent gets two coins for a ship upgrade. End of game advancements, we don't do those. Islands, right, here's where the big money's gonna come in. So we'll start here and we'll go across. Here, 
my opponent gets four coins and that's it. So I'll give him 10, take six off. Here, I've got the most cubes on the island. So I get seven. Okay, but it's tied for second place. The AI's got two and there are two empty spaces. Uh, if two or more players are tied, they all score the next value down. So the next value down is three, gets three. Here, I get the three, because I've got the most cubes. So that's nice and easy. Here, I get the three. Again, nice and easy. That's another ten. Okay, next. Uh, here. So this is where I, I, I've gone wrong. As John says, I could have taken control of this if I'd have been a bit cleverer with where I removed the cubes. So yellow gets nine and I get five. Oh, I'm running out of coins. So nine and five for me. Here I get four and here I get five. So that's another nine for me. And that's it for the islands. And I think that might be it. I've definitely not won. <laughs> so I've probably scored less than I did this afternoon. Yeah, I have. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. No, I haven't. 70. 77. Is that a good score? I don't know. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 77. Okay. Covenant gets more for the Middle Island. Oh, it gets another two for that. Yeah, forgot about that. Okay, so 77 for me, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 77. Seriously? Okay, I think we're tied. Yeah, upgrade score, I've done the upgrades. I think we're tied. Wow, that was a surprise. What happens in case of a tie? Have I added it up right? <laughs> well, I definitely did better than I did this afternoon. I'll tell you what, if, if, if this says the Wayward Covenant wins ties, Mr. John D. Clary is going to find himself unfriended on Facebook. Does it say? Does it say? The player with the most coins wins. In case of a tie, the tied players count up all of their cannons on their ship and on all the cards in their deck. Oh, you're going to love this. We have a fight. This is very thematic. Okay, so we add up all of the cannons. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. You couldn't have even, you couldn't have scripted this. This is brilliant. Right, so I've got, uh, and we can just use the cubes on the board at this point. I'm pretty sure you can just use the cubes on the board. Um, so I've got three cannons on my ship. Uh, let's just have a look at what we've got. I've got three cannons on my ship. I've then got two more cannons there. Yeah, this is brilliant. What a tiebreaker. I've got another cannon there. I guess I don't use battle abilities. Um, and he's got one, two, three, four, five. He's got five. So he's got five and I've got six. It's another six versus five fight. Yeah, so resolve exploding shots, but not battle abilities. Right, here we go. Are we ready? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I couldn't have scripted this. I really couldn't. Okay, it's all on this. With the prize of a Jaffa Cake bar. I bet it's not put it there, Adder. It might get in the way of the battle. Are we ready? Okay, we have an exploding shot, unfortunately. Okay, I think I've lost. Yep, we are literally just looking at battle strength, which is the crowns. Yellow has got this. So yellow's got two crowns. Yellow's got three crowns. I have two crowns. That's it. The end of the game, I lost the final fight.
But this has been fantastic. This has been really, really enjoyable. I think we're all done. So just before we wrap up, obviously a big thank you to everybody for watching live. And if you weren't watching live, if you've watched this afterwards, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment, especially if you enjoyed it and if you found it useful. Uh, but more importantly, as I mentioned at the start, this isn't a sponsored video. I've basically taken the whole day off work to prepare for this uh, and to bring you this video tonight. And that's only possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So if you are in a position to be able to support me on Patreon to help fund the channel and help me carry on making more videos like this, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters because without your support, I, I, I just haven't got the time to be able to do these. But it's been, it's been brilliant. Apparently I have a cube to re-roll. Oh, there is a cube to re-roll. You're absolutely right. Well spotted, Mike. It's not all over. It's not all over. There is a cube there balancing on the edge. If this lands on a crown, it doesn't matter because I lose ties. There you go. Thank you very much, Mike, for giving me a, an, a final chance. But yeah, that would have had to land in there in the double crown space for me to win. I'm going to have my commiseration Jaffa cake bar um, and then I'm going to pack this up. Yeah, we're, we're all done. So that's everything. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've been watching this video and you want to see how the multiplayer game works, I would recommend going and checking out, my, checking out my video from a couple of weeks ago or check out the live playthrough that I did with um, John himself, the designer, uh, during the actual original Kickstarter. If you are interested in getting a copy of the game, this is not available at retail, but um, AEG are going back to Kickstarter with it in the summer of this year. Uh, and they're going to be introducing Saga 3. So this is a game with a whole host of extra expansions. There's two Saga expansions currently, uh, and John's designed <coughs> a third Saga expansion, and you can get it on Kickstarter this month. This is not a retail-friendly game, so it's not going to come to retail. It is only available through Kickstarter. I need to lie down now. That was quite draining. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, I'm still recovering from COVID at the moment, and um, doing things like this is... It, it, yeah, it's very draining, but I'm glad I did it. It was supposed to be done last week, but there's just no way I was in a in a fit state to do it last week. But yeah, I just hope you found it useful and you've enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care, everybody. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Take care.